Hi there, I'm James Dapperty and this is Coffee and a Case Note. Guys, today what we're going to speak about is the assertion that a bank should have stopped a share sale or should have got some permission in relation to the share sale or should have stopped a withdrawal of the funds that were withdrawn at the end of that share sale. What are we talking about? We've got a marriage. We've got spouse A and we've got spouse B. And if we're starting by discussing a marriage and then a piece of litigation, uh, you can probably speculate on where we're going. But in essence, spouse A and spouse B are the joint holders of a number of accounts with a bank and they're also the joint holders of an account that is used for stock trading. And over the years, they use these accounts and spouse A tends to use the account more than spouse B, but that's beside the point. A moment arrives where spouse B causes the sale of over $300,000 in shares in the jointly held stock trading account. The sale of those shares causes funds to be directed into a joint bank account. And then spouse B causes those funds to be transferred into an account of hers. And what spouse A says is against the bank, says the bank was negligent in firstly allowing the sale, uh, then allowing the sale to happen without spouse A's permission, and then by allowing that withdrawal out of the account. Now, by way of side note, when we've got two spouses, two married people disagreeing about money, um, as, you, as you might imagine, although it's not my area of expertise, there's a family law element. And just to give you 30 seconds on that, uh, the dispute between spouse A and spouse B, sorry, spouse A and spouse B, uh, was litigated and some of the various orders made in relation to those family law proceedings included an order that spouse A, who was the agitator in relation to these transactions, would take 65% of the fruits of the litigation and that spouse B would take only 35%. That makes sense. So, just to recap that, the family court, the orders arising from the family law element were uh, not only is there divorce and separation and all those family law concepts I don't understand, uh, but also that spouse A gets 65% of this dispute with the bank and spouse B only gets 35%. Right, on we march. Let me refresh your memory on what the dispute is. We have spouse B causing a share sale from the joint share account to be paid into the joint bank account and then transferred out to an account that is only spouse B's. What spouse A says is the bank was negligent in allowing that to happen. Now, what the judge does is find extremely important the terms and conditions, the contract that applied to the operation of the bank account, right? The terms allowed the bank to take instructions or to act upon um, anything that came from spouse A or anything that came from spouse B. It meant that spouse A could take all the money out and do whatever spouse A wanted to do. Spouse B could take all the money out and do whatever spouse B wanted to do. Withdrawals could be made out. Payments could come in. All of these various things could happen and the bank had no contractual obligation in those terms and conditions to have to refer to the opposite spouse when one spouse wanted to do something. So as the judge was working through this stuff, um, the point sort of arose where the court was able to say, well, if you're saying it's negligent for spouse B to be able to sell some jointly held shares and for spouse B to be able to pay some money into the joint account and for spouse B to pay some money out of the joint account, well, that negligence or that duty of care that you say was breached, well, that directly conflicts with the terms of the contract because the terms of the contract allowed the bank to let transactions like that happen every single day. And so what the court went on to find that despite the fact that sometimes there are commercial contracts with uh, uh, duties of care that attach to them, such as provision of professional services by people like lawyers, uh, in this case, all the duties arose purely under a commercial arrangement. Um, those commercial duties were not breached. There was no breach of duty giving cause, giving rise to a claim in negligence. And that meant that 
spouse A, uh, disappointed as spouse A may be by these transactions, uh, did not have a claim in negligence against the bank. Now, I hope that that was of value to you, I hope it assisted to you, and I hope in a moment or two to have a coffee to share with you, but for the moment, I wish you the very best for your day. Cheers.